Gigapixel AI was just updated. There is a new version out there. And let's see how good that is when I upscale an image from EM10 Mark II, which is a 16 megapixel camera. And let's see how the image look, looks when it's 254 megapixels. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard and I am a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start looking at the new Gigapixel AI version, a disclaimer, this was not a sponsored video. This is something that I just wanted to do and Gigapixel or Topaz Labs, who is the maker of Gigapixel AI, has not seen this video before, nor, they, nor do they even know that I'm making this. So everything that I say is my own opinion based on me using the software. I've been using it for a little while now for some images that I have cropped and wanted to get the megapixels back. So usually I don't normally do 254 megapixel images. This is just a test to see how good it is. And if, if you need that, then you, it's good to know that it's possible and what the results are. But what I usually do is a, a cropped image that I will upscale back to around 20 megapixels. And there were some changes also to the tools that you can use. But before we get into those, let's look at the first example. Here is an image that I took a few days ago, a very boring image of a shipyard in downtown Helsinki. And that image was made four times bigger. So it went from 16 megapixels to 254 megapixels. So the image from EM10 Mark II taken with the kit lens is now 254 megapixels. I think it's pretty impressive. I think the quality is really good. Of course, there are some artifacts, but if you print this image, I don't think those artifacts will show. And if you really need a big print, then this method works perfectly. It's, it is better than the Photoshop super resolution. I have a video about that over there, so you can watch that if you want to compare the older version of Gigapixel to the Photoshop super, super resolution feature that is in Camera Raw. And also the speed is a lot faster than it was. And the, probably the reason that this new version is a lot faster is that I could find my GPU on the list that it supports now. It used to be so that it didn't support other than, I think, NVIDIA uh, GPU cards, but now they have uh, made more uh, GPUs available. So it's a lot, lot faster. But to be honest, I don't think the speed of the software is the most important uh, feature that it has. I think the main thing is how good the image looks because this is not something that you do to whole bunch of images. You might do one image and it doesn't really matter if it's 20, minute, 20 minutes or 10 minutes, you know, it doesn't really matter. And then there are some other differences. They say that they've improved the AI and made it a bit different. And they've also renamed the tools like, like it used to have the architecture uh, AI, now it's called lines. It's, you know, the same thing. It, it's uh, good for images that have thick lines like mostly cityscapes and, and images like that. But standard works quite well on most of the images. But as you can see from this image, the one on the left is made with standard and the one on the right is made with lines. And you can see there is a huge difference on this particular image. As you can see from the edge of the image, the, the difference is really big. And here is another example. This is an image that I posted to Instagram, so you can watch it from there too, the, in, the image I mean, not the video. So, and if you have not followed me yet on Instagram, go check out my Instagram account. And if you like it, please follow me there. I will follow you back if, if you have good images, because I only follow my friends and then uh, accounts that has good images. But then there's the question, how does the new version compare to the older version? And there is a question that uh, bugs me a bit because the results are quite equal. And to be honest, in some images, the older version was better. I don't know why, but that's what it is. As you can see from these samples, the new one is on the right and the older version is on the left. And you can clearly see that the older version is in many parts of the image a lot better. I have no idea why, because they were supposed to make the AI better. So if you have the older version, don't rush up 
updating your older version to a newer, newer one. Because as you see, there is not much of a difference. And I would say that the older version is a bit better. Of course, if you need the speed, then the new version is a lot better. But I think it's all about image quality. So think before you upgrade. And here is another example where you can see clearly the difference. It's not big, but there is a difference. And I, I would say that the older one is better on this image too. This one was made with standard AI. Well, should you get this in the first place? If you need to upscale your images, then yes, this is the best option there is on the market right now. It is really, really good. Where I use it is to upscale images that I have cropped, like this image of a plane. As you can see, the original is taken too far away. Okay, this is the closest I could get, and I had only the 12 to 40 millimeter lens, but I wanted a, a bit closer image of this plane. And here you can see the upscaled version, and then I've cropped it so that it's uh, about the same size as the original 20 megapixel. And the result is really good, in my opinion. And I think it works very well on this type of upscaling. And if you're interested in the software, I do have an affiliate link for it. So that much appreciated if you want to buy it and then use that link. It will support the free content that I'm making twice a week. And here are some more videos about Gigapixel AI. Thanks for watching and bye for now.